Quantum mechanics is a deeply troubling scientific theory. It challenges some of our most basic notions about physical reality. For example, it's inherently probabilistic. But more importantly, it forbids us from measuring certain physical quantities very precisely. For example, it forbids us from measuring both the position and momentum of a particle perfectly. But then it's, it's actually much worse than this. So it forbids us even from asking certain questions about a physical system. For example, if you have a particle that starts at a position A and after a second it's, it's measured at a position B, now you'd like to ask what path or trajectory this, art, this particle used to get there. Did it, did it go along this trajectory or that one or that one? This is a question that you're not allowed to ask in quantum mechanics. So this seems like a bizarre situation. You might even ask, why do physicists put up with something like this? Well, the answer is quantum mechanics has been extraordinarily successful in explaining physical reality. For example, it can be used to explain the conductivity of metals and the transparency of glass and colored objects and chemical reactions. And the list goes on and on and on. And so physicists have learned to live with the laws of quantum mechanics. So what are these laws? Well, in this lecture, I'd like to talk about a very simple experiment that can be used to illustrate some of the basic features of quantum mechanics and some of the most paradoxical features of quantum mechanics. So interestingly, this, this, you know, the, the simplest version of this experiment actually was performed in the early 19th century, about a hundred years before the birth of quantum mechanics. Okay, so, you know, this may be an experiment that you actually learned about in high school physics. It's called Young's double slit experiment and was used by Thomas Young to establish the wave nature of light. Now, the nature of light has had historically been, has historically been a major puzzle in physics. So, for example, Newton believed that light consisted of a rain of particles that he called corpuscles. But then, of course, in the early 19th century, in the early 1800s, Young performed this double slit experiment and showed that the interference fringes that he got could be explained by assuming that light consisted of waves. It traveled in waves. By the end of the 19th century, Maxwell gave his beautiful theory of electromagnetism, and that seemed to completely settle the nature of light, because in his theory, light consisted of, was, was just a propagating electromagnetic wave. And so things seemed to be completely settled. But barely two decades later, there were problems with the theory. First, with black body radiation, and then with the photoelectric effect. And in quick succession, first Max Planck, and then Einstein, in 1905, in his famous paper on the photoelectric effect, posited that light consists of discrete packets of energy, or quanta, and that these light quanta are what we call photons, which you can think of as particles of light. So in a sense, these experiments seem to show that light you can think of as a rain of particles, or that they behave like bullets. So there seemed to be a real contradiction between these different phenomena. It was not clear how to reconcile these, these views with each other. Well, a little later, a similar problem cropped up in the, in the context of electrons, which clearly seemed to be particles, but then in experiments on electron diffraction, 
they appeared to behave like, like waves. It soon became apparent that, that elementary particles seem to have a dual life. They behave sometimes like, like waves and sometimes like particles. It was not until the laws of quantum mechanics were finally understood that these two behaviors were reconciled with each other and it was understood that elementary particles behave neither as particles nor as waves but in their own idiosyncratic way as according to the laws of quantum mechanics. This behavior is what we'll understand in greater detail in the rest of this lecture in the context of the double slit experiment.